Bedtime Stories for Giants. If you like these stories and want to follow along on the Giants' adventures, please hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like this video. I hope you enjoy the story. Tell me a giant story. Before we jump into our story tonight, I want you to make sure that you're comfortable in your bed. You have your pillow and your blanket. And if you have one, your favorite stuffed animal. Now imagine yourself floating on a lily pad in the middle of the lake. Your body gently flows with the water. You take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose again and out through your mouth. Tonight, while you're listening to the story, imagine yourself floating on the lily pad in the middle of the lake. It was bedtime for our four giant siblings. Luna, the eldest, Bo, Apple Peach Banana, and Ernie, the youngest. They were lying in their beds trying to go to sleep. The four giants had had a busy day out in the sun. They had spent practically the whole day splashing and swimming and playing in the lake up on their mountain. But there was a noise. Yeah. That noise right there. It was keeping them awake. It wasn't a constant noise always happening. It seemed to happen right as one of them was about to get to dreamland. That was it. Ernie, the youngest giant, had to know. What is that sound? I'm so tired, but it's keeping me up. Luna said, it sounds like a frog. They live in the mountain lake, and they make that call at night. After tossing and turning for what felt like hours, but was probably actually only 20 minutes, the four giant siblings finally made it to dreamland. They were sleeping in their beds. The next morning when they woke up, the frog, for some reason, was still croaking. with more urgency this time. Apple Peach Banana said, It sounds like that frog has a message for us. It seems like it's trying to communicate to us. Bo said, We should go investigate. But first, breakfast. Because Bo was a growing boy, he could never miss breakfast. He wanted to grow up and be as big and strong as his dad giant. The four giants gobbled up their breakfast, headed up over the mountain to where the mountain lake was in search of the frog they had heard all night and all morning long. They knew they were getting close to finding the frog because the closer they got to the mountain lake, the louder the frog got. Apple Peach Banana called out. Mr. Frog, Mr. Frog, come out wherever you are. And to the four giant siblings, Luna, Bo, Apple Peach Banana, and Ernie's surprise, the frog answered. Hey, over here. The frog had been calling and calling for the giant children to come back to the lake. He had seen the four giant children at the lake the day before. He had been working really hard to impress them. He was a bit of a shy frog and didn't know how to tell them he wanted to join in their fun. And all night long, he was practicing. And now that the four giant children were there, he wanted to show off. 
Apple Peach Banana looked high and low, but couldn't spot the frog. Ernie searched behind some cattails. The frog wasn't there either. It was Luna who found him. He was sitting on top of a lily pad dangling his feet in the water. Luna called out, Bo, Apple Peach Banana, Ernie, come quick, I found him. I found the frog we've been looking for. None of the four giants had ever spoken with a frog before. Bo looked down at his feet and then looked up at the frog. Ahem. <clears throat> Hello? He said. The frog's answer surprised everyone. I hiccup when I get nervous. Luna said, Wow, that was really good. Try it again. Okay, here it goes. That was so good, Apple Beach Banana said. What is that called? The frog told them. It's called yodeling. Luna looked confused. She asked, Yodel dodel doodling? Apple Peach Banana said, No, I think he said oodle doodle poodling. O said, No, I got it. It's called Yodel Lodel 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 Lean. Ernie shrugged his shoulders and looked very serious and said, Ooh ee, ooh ah ah, ting ting, walla walla bing bang. This made the frog smile. Yodeling had been the perfect icebreaker for him because he was a little shy and nervous to meet new people, but he wanted friends. Starting off with his yodeling talent, the frog was able to tell the giant children all about yodeling and how to pronounce it. He told them how in Switzerland, a long time ago, they used yodeling to call their cows and to communicate across mountaintops. Luna thought, gee, that could be very useful. We live on a mountain, and sometimes I play on one mountaintop, and Bo plays on another mountaintop. And sometimes I have messages I want to share with him. Luna asked Mr. Frog if he could teach the four of them how to yodel. Mr. Frog agreed. He spent that afternoon yodeling. And you would be surprised how hard it is to yodel. Mr. Frog would say, And the four giant children would try their best to imitate it. First, it was Luna's turn. Next, Apple Peach Banana gave it a try. Little Ernie gave it a whirl. When it was Bo's turn to yodel, he wanted to do it the right way. He climbed to the tippy top of one of the mountains and belted out his yodel. Yo. Hearing how Bo's yodel echoed throughout the valley, Apple Peach Banana climbed on one of the mountain tops, and Luna climbed on a different mountain top and yodeled away to hear it echoing. First, it was Luna. Yola, 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 yola. Apple Peach Banana returned Luna's yodel. Yola, 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 yola. 
Mr. Frog wanted to yodel on top of a mountain top too. He asked Ernie for a ride. Ernie put Mr. Frog on his shoulder and climbed to a fourth mountain top. Up there, first Mr. Frog yodeled. Then Ernie returned it. It was true. The giant children had a lot of practicing to do. They still had fun learning this new talent and meeting a new friend. When it was time to say goodbye to Mr. Frog, they reassured him they'd practice their yodeling skills and meet back at the mountain lake sometime for a yodeling competition. Bo reached out his hand for a high five from the frog and the frog followed through in true froggy fashion. He gave Bo a high five with his tongue and went down the line giving Luna a high five, Apple Peach Banana a high five, and Ernie a high five. The four giant siblings headed up over the mountain back to their mountain home, the whole time yodeling away. That night, they asked their dad to sing a yodel song. And their dad that night found a hidden talent he had had all along. That night, while the four giant children were falling asleep, we could still hear Mr. Frog croaking. But tonight, it didn't bother them because they knew exactly who was making the noise and they knew it was a new friend. All four of the giants dreamt of a frog that night because they heard his croaking in their dreams. Although that story is done, you are still floating on your lily pad in the lake. You can hear frogs in the background with stars above you and water below. You feel your lily pad gently floating up with each slight wave and back down again. The waves start at your feet, gently move to your ankles, to the lower legs. Now you can feel it under your knees. The wave has reached your upper legs and your bum. Next, you feel your back gently rising up and back down again all the way up to your neck, and lastly your head. Each of these waves come and go with the speed of your breath. As you are breathing in, you feel the waves starting again at your toes, ankles, backs of your knees, upper legs, your bum, your back, neck and your head as you breathe out. You rest like this on your lily pad for a while, enjoying the floating sound of the water and the sound of the frogs. Night giants. <laughs>